Um, hey everybody, I'm Cami Rice. I am the editor for Anthro Circus. And one of the things that we love about our team is that um, the level of trust that we have with each other. And so we've learned along the way of working together that um, if we uh, one of us feels a bit uncomfortable or expresses discomfort with a decision that we've made, that we should uh, dig into that. And so we ran into that today um, as we made face a decision over how to um, whether we should adjust our publishing schedule in honor of um, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, um, a question raised by our creative director. And that started in a text conversation, led to phone calls, and um, ultimately had us um, changing our approach to the day. Um, so we wanted to, in honor of the spirit of the day, we wanted to invite you into that conversation and how we wrestled um, through that together. It allows you to learn a little bit about how we operate, but also, um, we hope that this is a conversation that's valuable to um, everyone who's trying to figure out how to how how to wrestle together with other people around these these issues. So um, I'm going to go ahead and have Armand introduce himself. Take it away. Thank you, Cami. Uh, my name is Armand Means, and I am uh, the um, operations and social media manager for uh, Anthro Circus, and uh, I've been with our team here now for about two, almost three years. So, yeah. yeah, we were very glad when Armand joined us as we were um, preparing to relaunch um, from our old name of Cult Culture Keeper to become Anthro Circus. He's been a huge addition to the team. Um, so the, the background, just to, to give you all a sense of what we were trying to decide, we um, had planned a article for today um, and realized it, it didn't have anything to do with Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And so um, we discussed the possibility of delaying that article to publish on Tuesday and running Martin Luther King Jr. posts um, in our stories on social media. Um, part of the challenge is that our ethos as a, as a publication is that we want to represent diversity and a variety of voices all year long. And so we didn't want to just do that. It, it can feel a bit... Um, diminish a bit um, what we're doing if we just join on a bandwagon for a day um, that maybe is sincere, maybe isn't sometimes. Um, and so we just wanted, it, we, it really became a wrestling. So um, we began to listen to each other as we tried to sort this out. Uh, so Armand, I think um, just to recreate our converse, phone conversation a bit, um, when I came to you, I think I asked something about, you know, what if, if it fell off to you and if it did, what if we um, just went with our planned programming um, for Monday, for okay. today? Um, I think if I remember correctly, I think the two points that we kind of discussed were um, what would the benefit of kind of um, be to j just doing something for MLK Day and would that feel, um, would that feel diminished, as you mentioned? Um, and then also kind of what would be the, um, the harm and kind of running two post kind of, as you had mentioned. Um, and um, my initial thought, while um, I understood both sides of that conversation, the kind of journalistic integrity side of like we have a set schedule of, of creating these new stories and we wanted to keep with the existing schedule um, at, the, at the time that the article has been to be, re be released. Um, but we've also, you know, have, have constantly been an organ uh, a team and, and, publication that has flexed with um, the needs of our contributors and our viewers and um, try to be sensitive to that. And um, I think um, with that um, in mind, I think it made a lot of sense to have this, this conversation. Um, and I think the, the thing that immediately stood out was the my concern with trying to do two things at once was um, that you'd be drawing too much attention away from either story. Um, that by um, posting a regular um, article as was originally planned, and then also doing something for Martin Luther King Jr. Day um, would almost feel um, as if it's an afterthought and kind of pandering to some extent um, to the day um, more than it is giving um, it kind of dedicated um, recognition. Um, and not just the day itself, but everything that it's kind of come to represent. Um, but, um, but then, just in the amount of the amount of eyes and attention that get placed upon either thing get kind of lost in the mix. Um, I think the second part to that was um, the benefit I think to doing something specifically for for MLK Day was um, we could have I think a dedicated conversation um, and um, 
as one of the team members who's US based, um, as we're kind of international today involves people from the United States and Jordan and you who are usually in France. And, um, uh, you know, it, it, it seems that um, we, we bring these international perspectives. And even though um, it is a data that's recognized primarily just in the, in the United States, um, the importance of it, um, I, I think, can't be, um, can't be diminished, um, as, as you'd mentioned. And I think the, particularly, like I said, as of one of the US team members, um, the things that have happened here over the past, you know, three to four years, as we think about the political cycle that we've just come out of with the election and Black Lives Matter movement, police brutality incidents, um, even um, the incidents of racism and um, attacks against Asian Americans throughout the pandemic, um, the idea of talking about diversity and inclusion and expressing that diversity and wanting to um, give a kind of a proper um, sense of honor to the day that, um, you know, was such a pivotal part of the, the civil rights, or for this leader who's such a pivotal part of the civil rights movement, um, I think is an important context and important thing, maybe more so for those of us here in the States. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, the weight of, like I said, just the past few years, I think um, really helps kind of add to that. I think, um, like I said, helps give that the kind of proper honor, so. And I think um, one of the challenges we have is as an international publication, we're bringing international perspectives, our audience is all over, but we do have a lot of our audience in the US and obviously part of our team. And um, we, it, it's a challenge to not be too US focused, but recognize that also what's happening in the US has an impact um, kind of on the rest of the world, which some of our stories that we link um, below this, this um, video will attest to. Um, it, it, but it, we can't honor every holiday and right. so I think, um, can you speak at all to why we feel like, and, and we'll kind of wrap up kind of from here, but like why this feels like we needed to do something to honor this particular day? Um, I, I think it lets people in a little bit on, on into our organization and our team and you know, who we are. Um, and that I think it speaks to the idea of um, even our own internal sense of inclusion, but also, um, thoughtfulness, right, of which we try to approach all of our articles with cultural sensitivity and um, an international perspective um, and how we think big picture. But um, importantly, I think it's, um, I think it's a I think it's representative of the conversations that we hope people are having within their own homes, within um, a corporate structure, within schools and, you know, all these places who use the kind of hot button topics of diversity and inclusion as these terms um, that oftentimes fall short and feel like either a pandering or tokenism to some extent, um, but really um, go so much deeper than that. And and um, they really are about these ideas of how can we let people be heard and how can we take the time to hear them? How can we take the time to understand and communicate um, and um, find those common ground in those places where um, people feel seen and, and value, valued and important um, and wanting everybody to have a space in which um, they're able to be part of the larger conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And I hope that, you know, organizations out there and people and, you know, everybody's taking those things into consideration as they, and they kind of think about not just Martin Luther King Jr. Day, but, you know, just the ideas in general that, you know, are, are mm -hmm. so important in society today. So. Yeah. And I think um, just to say like, I'll be honest, I had a really busy, busy day ahead of me today. And, you know, I thought it was just, we were making a quick team decision and it turned into a thing, <laughs> but what we, as we've often found, it was, it's been worth it to take the time to dig into it. And, um, it does take time. It does take energy. It takes conversation and listening, but, um, that turns into something valuable and that helped us make a better decision because of saying, here's something we need to give attention to. Absolutely. So we just want to encourage you all to to follow that when you can and, and take the time and, and do the work. And hopefully you'll find it to be as rewarding as we have. So thank you all for listening in and I uh, hope you keep enjoying our stories and we're glad to have you as part of our community. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Amy.